One of the big questions I've had as manager of Guernsey this year is, how are we going to deal with Scott Williams when he leaves us? The star man, arguably the player of the series so far, has been immense, but as a key part of our defence, knowing that he's only on loan to the end of the year, the cogs have been turning. I've been thinking, I've been searching, and I think I found a player who, to be honest, I wasn't sure if I was going to sign, and then I saw how good he was, the price we could get him for, and I couldn't say no. We have a new key player at our team. It is Haji Mononga. This guy is a Tanzanian international. He was previously playing for Portsmouth in the championship. He started one game for them as a backup. Second half of last season, he was on loan in League One for Barnsley, where he had a handful of appearances. Only a few starts for them. After a number of months without a club, he decided he was willing to drop down to our level. And he looks absolutely immense. He had a little bit of interest in him, but given the fact we were promising him regular first team football, he's decided to join us. He's a key player for the Vanarama National League kind of level. Yes, perhaps he doesn't have the potential of being a championship player like Scott Williams, but I think it can't be underestimated. This man is a steal. This man, at least for the rest of the season, will play alongside Scott Williams. He may, well, I was going to say he may be the replacement. He is the replacement. He will be with us next year, even if we can't renew Scott Williams' loan. And I think we're much better with him. Now, of course, last episode, we had two of the biggest games in the history of Guernsey Football Club. If you missed them, I can't stress it enough. It was one of the best episodes of the series so far. Go watch it. Today, we're back. We've got Salisbury in the league. It's first versus second. A win here puts us four points ahead of them with a game in hand. It would put us in pole position to get promoted. Suddenly, I'm not very worried about the league anymore. Given how confident we were against Bognor Regis, a repeat performance like that would be amazing. After the minor matter of the league game, which feels quite small in comparison. Ordinarily, first versus second would be the main course of an episode, but not today, because we've got the FA Cup second round. We're taking on Boreham Wood, a Vanarama National League side who are only a couple of places ahead of York, who we've already knocked out this competition. And should we beat Boreham Wood, the plan is to come back and do the FA Cup third round as the third game today. That's the plan. We do have to beat Boreham Wood, which is not an easy task by any means, but I want to believe it can happen. Let's run the intro and get straight into game number one, shall we? Now, since you were last here and we had that historic result against Birmingham, we've only played one match, and that one match was against Norwood in the FA Trophy, a convincing win against the team who, of course, were in our league a couple of years ago. They play a level below us in this game. Shitayo with two was nice to see. This man's been getting some first-team football in the cup games. Truth be told, in the league, he's been a little bit meh for lack of a better word. He's, he's not been great for us in the league, but in cup competitions against lesser teams, he's continuing to score. It was nice to see him on the score sheet. And what you might notice here is there was a two-week gap before the Norwood game. I actually had enough players on international duty that I could postpone some games. And as a result of that, we got a much-needed rest. Because to be frank, when you look at the first few months of the season... We've played quite a lot of football. Like I already mentioned, today's first game is going to be against Salisbury. If they beat us, they would go ahead of us, although we do have a game in hand. Ourselves and them have only lost one game each. This isn't going to be an away game that's easy, but we do have an immense away run to keep going. Open is going to continue right now. Before we do that, though, the small matter of the away day, the most important part of the episode, let's be honest. We are travelling from Guernsey, and today we're heading to Salisbury, and in fact, we're heading north of Salisbury to the football team that sits on the outskirts of the town. And if we just have a look, the street view apparently runs right into the green of the pitch, which is exciting. And here we are outside the ground. I'll be honest, it's not the most high-tech or advanced car park that I've ever seen in football. Well, look at that. They've got a lovely sign. Welcome to Salisbury FC. We are in the right place. Can we take a look, closer look at it? <laughs> Where's the sign gone? Where's the, uh, They have a club shop. We don't have a... Do we have a club shop? I don't know. I think I've solved the mystery of the missing sign. That They've moved it to the front of the stand so that when you drive in like the Google Street View van has, you can actually see it, so you know you're in the right place. I have got to say, this is a very, very nice-looking stadium. This is very non-league, isn't it? You've got the standing terrace stand on the far side, lovely pitches, a fence just tall enough that people can't peek over it. There's even a, a bonus man or woman walking free dogs. I'm going to give the Raymond Mick Hill Stadium a solid 
Six and a half out of ten. It'd be a bit higher if the car park was more high tech. If you want to tarmac that over, painting some car parking spaces, I'd give you an extra point. So when it comes to team news for this match against Salisbury, we are at full strength. That is what you want to see. Our game in the FA Cup against Boreham Wood happens in three or four days. I need to rest the players after this game. I'd love a simple result where I can haul off the key men early. Let's go make it happen, please, lads. I've said I've said that with lots of confidence. 15 minutes in, not been a classic in this game, been a bit of a slow burner, but maybe an opportunity for us here. Will Merry doing his thing, cutting in from the right-hand side on that occasion, not putting the best ball in, but Nolan wins a crucial header there. NLBM has his back to goal, gives it back to Iwamene, Atkinson, Carl Farquad, and I'll tell you what, that is, that's an immense goal, isn't it? First few seasons, we, uh, we didn't play pretty football. Now we're starting to play some pretty football. That was really nice. The finish was delightful. We take a lead with the first real chance of the game. Dylan Crow free kick just inside our own half, plays it inside to Iwamene, although actually Monoga takes control of the situation, picks up the ball, gives it to Iwamene, who's going to play it forward, headed away by Bates, but only as far as Mary, who's going to float it in. NLBM is there, and NLBM makes it two goals in the space of two or three minutes. It's a quick one-two, and Salisbury, they've got their backs up against the wall, and this is exactly what we wanted to see. Ball played forward initially, dealt with well by Bates, but Mary picks at the ball, and it's a moment of quality for a man who doesn't have the best crossing in the world. NLBM headers goalwards, and with it, it's 2-0. This might seem a little bit weird, but I'm actually going to tell the players just to lower the tempo and shorten the passing. I feel like in this at this moment here, I just kind of want to manage this game. We don't need to run around unnecessarily. In fact, I'm going to tell the players to press less as well. I'm thinking already about the game um, that we have in, well, a few days' time. I feel like it's in our interest to minimise the amount of sprinting around we're doing. I'm happy for us to boss possession and just kind of play at our own tempo. Dylan Crow free kick, a third goal, and I would start to haul players off. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to start to haul them off because Will Merry, the man who I wouldn't say is particularly good at heading, has just pulled out potentially the header of the season. Dylan Crow doing his thing from set pieces, the right back, floats it in, Merry heads it back across goal. And I mean, that is an inch perfect header. That is immense. And with that, I think this game's done. So I have opted for a triple change. Kai Livingston, Tajera, and also Tyler Forbes coming on, just giving the big guns the likes of Merry, Osborne, and also NLBM a rest here. Jallo on this near side, driving our defence again. I'll tell you what, he's looked key to everything that they've done. And finally, they have found a breakthrough. A goal kick kicked into the wide areas. Seven minutes left. I think they've left it too little too late. Truth be told, I think this game plays out very differently had we stayed on the front foot and really looked to push things. But a bit of game management needed. It's a long season. Knowing that we've got this massive game against Boreham Wood, opted to take off some of our best players. Maybe that's cost our performance a little bit to end this game. And well, it very nearly cost us yet again. That shot's gone just over. But with that, that surely is the final action of the half. And it's mission accomplished. It's a 3-1 win. So the full-time whistle rings out here. Like I said, this game in the second half could have gone very, very differently. I feel like maybe the scoreline flatters us a little bit, but that said, given the context and the decisions we made, we did what we needed to do. There wasn't a lot to this game. So with that result there, we actually have now played 14 games this season of the 42-game season. That puts us at the 33% mark. Between the FA Trophy and FA Cup, there's been a fair few distractions. But despite that, we are in a really, really strong position. With that said, small matter of the FA Cup second round looms. We play Boreham Wood in three days' time. I'm going to go rest the players that we just played in that last game because I think we're going to go with the exact same team selection yet again. I'll join you guys in a couple of days' time for that one. Don't go anywhere. So three days have passed, ready and raring to go. I have just realised I've decided for whatever reason today to wear a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey. For those of you that don't follow ice hockey, the Leafs are known for choking in big games. I don't know why I've decided to wear this shirt today. I suppose if we lose this FA Cup game now, I can just blame it on the shirt I'm wearing. It's not my tactical decisions. It was just, you know, bad luck, bad unlucky shirt I was wearing. If we win... Maybe the curse is broken and the Leafs are going to win the Stanley Cup this summer. Let's not get too ridiculous. Uh, before we get into this game, comment question of the day. I know a lot of you guys watch this on your lunch break. What are you having for lunch today? Go in the comments, let me know what you're eating. What did I have for lunch today? Chicken tikka sandwich. I know. 
and exotic. So today's opposition in Borenwood are a good team. Their key player is Paul Glatzel. Now, Paul Glatzel, I think I signed a couple of years ago in Park to Prem. Former Liverpool youngster, very, very good player for this kind of level. If we just compare him with NLBM, just to give you a little bit of an idea of the head-to-head -head comparison, NLBM maybe has the edge in physicals, maybe has the edge in some of the technicals needed for a striker, but on overall balance... Glatzel's a little bit better. With the team selection not changing anything from the team that started the previous game, we do get a couple of extra players on the bench, which is always nice just to kind of give us a few more options if we need to change the game. We're at home for this first leg. If it goes to a second leg, we do that today. If we win this game, we do the next round of the FA Cup today as the third match of the episode. If we lose this... I, I don't know what the plan is. I'm not planned for losing. That's a loser's mentality. There's maybe a temptation in a game like this to change the tactics up, go super attacking or super defensive, but having learned from previous mistakes, we are going to approach this game the same way that we approached the York game at home and Birmingham game at home. We're going to try and use our home advantage. We're going to play to our system that works to our strengths and try and pull off a little bit of an upset. It's going to be tough, but it looks like it's a relatively packed out house, not to the same level as Birmingham, but another good opportunity today to make some Wonga get more money in the bank. We are actually currently following a similar path to Aval Church. I think it said Aval Church, the team that went on an FA Cup run this year in real life, they play out, I believe, the same level as us. In real life, they knocked out Cheltenham of League One fame in the first knockout round. They did lose in the second knockout round, I believe, to Forest Green. We, we could literally copy them for like for like in terms of our path. I want to try and go that one step further than they did in real life. And well, maybe a chance here. First highlight of the game, Merry cutting inside the number seven, dinks it towards, uh, I, th I think that was NLBM there. He didn't win the ball in the air. And now Mella is in behind for them. One-on-one, -on -one, takes it around the keeper and slots it away. And this is the first time I think in a home game of this FA Cup run where we do find ourselves a goal behind. We've come back from a goal deficit against York before. But that is not ideal, is it? Mello gets through, and I'll tell you what, compared to other teams and other players we've come up against during our league season, that's a very composed finish. At our level, tip players don't go around the keeper like that. Um, yeah, it's a really good finish in the end. 1-0 Boreham Woods. And, well, it, it could get worse. They've got a throw in on the near side. Right, plays it inside to Murray. He cuts inside, lays it across. Manonga... Gets it away from danger, but only as far as N.D. who now has the ball. He pulls the trigger from range, and maybe pressure starting to mount a little. Going to go for a shout of demand more. Get shouty, shouty. That's what's needed right now. Ball launched up the field by Bycroft, but Scott in the defence for them wins it back well. Atkinson, though, to the second ball. The left winger on the byline. Can he try and get the ball into the box? Nolan, the left back, floats it in. in. NLBM is there, squares it to Farquad. Is he onside? That looked weird. It, it's on so I'm allowed to celebrate it. I was expecting it to be ruled out. Did that look weird to anyone else? I'm not going to complain. Nolan's ball here, I don't think is actually a good ball at all. I'm not sure that's where he intended to put it. And LBM does square it. Farquad was behind the ball, so he wasn't offside. Weird finish. Weird goal. The shout of demand more's work, though. Halftime in this game, 1-1. It's been a really, really even game. Our XG is slightly higher. That's perhaps because we had a tap-in that was an open goal for our goal that we scored. On the balance of play, though, it has been an even game. We've just edged out possession. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I feel like in this kind of game, if you praise the players, they get complacent. By telling them I'm far from pleased, I want to believe that's going to fire them up to try and maintain this level and continue to push on in the second half. 10 minutes into this half, you know what? I'm going to make the change that I feel like we've made a lot during this cup run. We're going to move Iwamene to a defensive deep line playmaker. Mary's going to move on to attack. I'm going to take off Atkinson and bring in Livingston. I feel like Livingston with his pace has been kind of our ace up our sleeve in a lot of these cup games. A pacey winger we bring on against tiring teams. I suppose at this point it's worth acknowledging we are struggling a little bit with condition. They are struggling just as much, if not even more than we are. With tired legs comes tired minds. With tired minds comes mistakes. It could be a mistake that decides this game as we approach the last 25 minutes here. Currently, it's Borenwood in possession, trying to get it forward towards Sherborne, but a nice win by Williams sees us have possession. Merry now out on this near side as that inside forward gives it to NLBM, who's going to go all on his lonesome and hit the post. It's cleared away from danger by Borenwood. Kyle Livingston keeps it alive, tries to get the ball down the line. 
that was a half a chance, really. It was a difficult opportunity. The finish was not a bad attempt by any means, but just the wrong side of the woodwork. 20 minutes left. Osborne's not the best of games today. I'm going to bring in Tejera. Will Merry has struggled in the wide areas, but I really don't have an option for him. Elsewhere, I'm going to bring in Cox for Dylan Crow, who's not been particularly good today. With 15 minutes left, though, we are the team on top. There's definitely a temptation to go more attacking here. I know that away from home, it's going to be a much tougher task. If there's one thing we've learned in this cup run, it's that when we play teams at home, we have the capability to score goals. And whilst we managed to get one goal here, whilst we're on top, I kind of want to just keep pushing and keep going. That might not be necessary, though, if we can create something here. Farquad into the wide area, squares it in. It's cleared away just about. Some composed defending there to pass it inside their own 18-yard box. But we're back with the ball, and it's Nolan with it. The left back gets far at the pitch, puts it in. Farquad's there, and oh my word, I don't need to go more attacking. It's goal number 18 of the season for Kyle Farquad. It's 2-1 in front of the away fans. Kyle is just dancing in front of them. He doesn't give a scooby-doo if they're the away fans. And oh my word, Nolan... The number three gets all the way forward, whips it in. Farquad, not the tallest player in the world, not the best header of the ball in the world. He's found the top bins. Now that we've got that goal, I am just going to drop Livingston deeper and tell the wingbacks to go on defend. We don't, we don't need to overcommit here. We can go on positive, less passing into space, lower the tempo, up the time wasting as much as we can. We've got 13 minutes to try and survive. Have to say, on the balance of play here, we've deserved the lead in this game. We are 2-1 up with five minutes left. I'm currently on positive rather than attacking. There's a temptation to go on to cautious even now. Really try and shut up shop. We're no longer passing it into that space. We're just trying to keep hold of the ball as best we can. Time waste and well... We are four minutes away, three minutes away from the FA Cup third round. There could be a chance here. Oh my word, I thought it was in. And LBM <laughs> picked up the ball, had a shot from range. It's hit the side netting. But I'm just staring at the top left. Time, just trickle away. I want to keep this cut run going forever. And it is going to keep going on. We're into the third round of the FA Cup. And yes, it wasn't the toughest game in the world, fixture-wise against Boreham Wood. That is still a mad, mad performance. Farquad gets man of the match, an 8.6 rating for this man, a player we picked up just as a reminder on a free transfer from our rivals, Wimborne. He's got 13 goals in 10 games this season. In the cup, he's equally immense. And that is just a crazy performance. This might sound weird. I'm not as excited or as pumped about this result as I am the Birmingham one. This, I don't know, maybe it's because the Birmingham one was just a bigger upset, but this one, it, it didn't have the same vibe to it, and I can't really explain why. What I do know is we're into the third round of the FA Cup. We're playing that game whenever it is right now. Let's get to the cup draw. For winning that round, we got given £67,000. Our balance is now up at £219,000. According to the YouTube comment section, the ticket revenue is divided between the home and the away team. So I think in an ideal world, the best draw that we could get here is away to a Premier League side. Okay, it's the FA Cup draw. I'm nervous. I am... I, look, I'm scared. I could just hit the draw all teams. Instead, I'm going to just put it on automatic draw. You guys will see the edited version unless we come out straight away. We want a Premier League team away. I don't want a team like AFC Wimbledon. A championship team away wouldn't be bad either. Liverpool are out. My dream fixture's gone. Manchester United, that'd be good. They've got Wolves. Ah, would have been good. Man City, please. Bro I don't want Bromley. Thank you, thank you, FM. There are a couple of Anorama national teams in this round. So, yeah, I mean, I think we are the lowest team still in the competition, but there are a few non-league teams that have gone on good runs this year. I'm still waiting for us to come out. Chelsea is still in the, the hat. There's two. Oh, my word. We've been drawn against Warsaw or Aldershot, who are both in the Vanarama National League. Could we make the fourth round? Probably not. I mean, that's not a good draw, is it? It's not a good draw. On the one hand, it's a winnable game. On the other hand, it's a team in the Vanarama National League in the third round, which isn't really what I wanted. Warsaw are currently second in the National League. 
and Aldershot are currently fifth. So they are two of the better teams in this division. So the third round is yet to come up in our schedule because the second round replay has got to happen between our two potential oppositions. But the start date for it and the game of the fixture is a long way away. I've got a lot of games to play, play between now and then. In fact, I've yeah, I've got, got a lot of football manager to play. I'm going to go and play a month and a half of football manager. If we win this game, £100,000, that'd be nice. Who knows? Maybe we'll have some new signings by then as well. Um, either way, FA Cup third round. It's not a sexy fixture, but I'll join you guys for it in a mo. Had I realised the third round of the FA Cup was a month and a half away, probably wouldn't have promised it for today's episode, but I've just played a month and a half of Football Manager over the course of the last few hours. As a result, we're back. It's the 11th of January. We have got to take on Aldershot. Before we do that probably should talk about the football matches we have played. And it's safe to say we have played a hell of a lot. Some really good league wins in here. A couple of slip-ups, though, that are worth noting. The first was against Hemel Hampstead. We lost this game 4-1. I played a rotated team. You can see the team I played here. I trusted Chitayo. I trusted Forbes. Chitayo let me down. Forbes didn't. Forbes is great. We lost 4-1 in the end. We were 4-0 down at halftime. Not a good day at the office. A game I regret not doing as a live commentary was this one. York v Guernsey. It finished 6-5. It was a rematch against York. We're out the FA Trophy with this defeat. We were 3-0 up after 11 minutes. And they were 4-3 up after 46. Jay Reed scored four goals in like three minutes. It, it wasn't a good time. So unfortunately, we are out the FA Trophy with that result. It means the FA Cup is the only cup we're left in. The only other game that we didn't get three points in was actually against Murtha, who, if I'm not mistaken, are a team based in Wales that play in England. So they're a bit like us in a way, you know, a team that aren't in England that play in our league. This one, nil-nil. A disappointing draw. Wasn't even a rotated team. They just put in a really good performance. Besides that, though, over the course of the last nine games that we've played, some really good wins in here. Plenty of clean sheets, lots of goals scored. Carl has continued to be the main man. 11 goals in his last 10 league games, two assists as well. He's not far away from me having to pay him a big bonus for seasonal goals. And it's only January. Unfortunately, despite the fact he does have the highest average rating in the league, he's not the top goal scorer. 19 goals to his name does put him above Leftbridge, but Alfie Stanley of Dorchester Town has come out of nowhere. This man has 25 goals in 21 games. It seems like in the current match engine, there's lots of goals in Football Manager in this kind of lower level of football. Patrick Grooms has also left us with the January transfer window opening, but we've got no new signings in. That just about catches you up in a very succinct way on what's happened over the last month and a half. It's, it's been a busy time. So older shots who were playing in this FA Cup third round are fourth in the Ranarama National League. I want to believe this game is winnable, but it is away from home. It's going to make it tricky. It also means... I have to do an away day. I didn't even realise that when the draw happened. I'm sure some people watching the FA Cup third round draw, when they saw it was an away day, they were pumping their fists because they knew what was coming. Let's go find out where the recreational ground is. Today's away day isn't the furthest we've had to do going from Guernsey. We are heading near Guildford. Um, where is Aldershot? In fact, just west of Guildford is Aldershot. And the stadium, I'm going to assume, is this green square here. Indeed it is. That would have been a little bit awkward, wouldn't it, if it was just like a random park that I zoomed in on. I'm going to hope that the pitch is in better condition than it looks on the satellite view because it's a little bit brown. Now, good news, Street View fans. We can go and look in up close at the centre circle. So I'm just going to drag the dot here. And uh, I mean, OK, we're in the trophy room of Aldershot. I mean, this looks like a dining room, doesn't it? Where am I? This isn't the pitch. Uh, I'm in the the... the Team showers, the lo lovely toilets, nice and clean. Good on you, older shot players. Why is this on the street view? So older shot appear to have put 360 photos of their stadium, but just attached it to random dots. There's all these dots on the pitch. Is one of them going to be on the pitch? Okay, here is the pitch. Here is older shots ground. I mean, look at this. I mean, I've got to say, this is quite a nice ground. You can tell it's a few tiers above what we have been playing in. Lovely pitch as well. Not as brown as it looked in satellite view. I'll tell you what, older shot. I was I was critical initially because of the lack of organisation. Like, you should put them geographically, the, the street view bits where they are. But I am absolutely appreciative of the fact that we can actually sit in the stands and look at what it looks like. This is class, isn't it? Lovely seat colours. I mean, older shot, great stadium. Hasn't got a bowling alley or a mini golf or a cinema next door. So lose points for that. But in terms of the complete Jack Dozen away day experience, 
I am grateful. I've also just realised here, can we just click on these things to move around the pitch? Oh my word. This is what it's like to take a penalty. Also, why are Chelsea having advertising boards at Aldershot? I've got questions. We'll have a look at the home dressing room. Here it is. If you're wondering what the Aldershot changing room looks like, uh, looks like they're going to play a 4 3 Free today. I'll tell you what, it'll be very scary if they do now play a 4 3 3. I already knew today's part to Prem was going to be a longer episode. I've just spent five minutes looking through Aldershot Stadium on Street View. Go and explore it yourself. There's loads more to look at that I didn't show in the video. We are, for now at least, going to focus on the FA Cup because that is quite important, really. Remember, star centre back Monoga, the guy I've been bigging up at the start of today's episode, uh, he's at the African Cup of Nations with Tanzania. So, uh, Best centre-back isn't available today. I suppose the silver lining to that news is he is the only player missing today. It means Pasal is going to come in and play as that left centre-back. Of course, if we draw this game, it goes to a second leg against Aldershot. That will be in tomorrow's episode now. It's very late as I sit and record this. In terms of the rest of our team, you can see it here. You might be a little bit curious about a few players who are unhappy, the likes of Farquad, uh, NLBM and also Osborne. They are players that want to play more first-team football. I've been rotating the team very heavily because, to be honest, we've had weekend games and midweek games for months and months and months. And apparently I've just rotated the team too much. So they're unhappy with me. But as a result of me rotating them, the form's been okay and they've stayed fit. So I think I've been making the right call. So we'll just have to agree to disagree. But despite that, obviously, Osborne, Farquad and LBM naturally all going to start today. It's the FA Cup. The FA Cup. Sponsored by Emirates. The FA Cup. I feel like a bit of a broken record, but at this point, you know, why not believe that we can do it? We have to realise we are the underdogs. We're very much up against it. We've already knocked out two teams in this division. It's kind of mad that we've made it to the third round of the FA Cup and only played one football league team. We've really dodged some of the more difficult games that we could have had. That said, older shot here is not going to be easy. We're going to play the 4-3-3 and see what we can do. We're going to play our style of football. Aldershot are competing for promotion to the Football League. They are a good team. I'm saying all of this. We've only had 34% of the ball, but we have had all of the shots so far in this game. I mean, we're a team that we can play pretty football if we want. I'm kind of content for us to sit deep if need be and then hoof the ball up long. And well, we've sat very deep there, maybe too deep. It was a very easy effort that actually, I thought the keeper saved. No, it hit the post and went wide, went out for a goal kick and immediately... We have another highlight. I feel like we need another Jack Bycroft heroic moment today. And although we might need a Farquad heroic moment, he's just scored his 27th goal of the season. What is happening in front of the gazebo? There's a puck to Prem throwback. We take the lead against older shots and having at our end seen them hit the post from the resulting goal kick, we've hoofed it long, we've kicked it over the top. Carl Farquad takes it around the keeper and scores. Is he wearing gloves? You might not be able to see on the YouTube compression. He is wearing gloves in January on a football pitch. Nothing makes me more angry than footballers wearing gloves in winter. I realise I'm channeling my inner Graham Sooness there, aren't I really? Just complaining about the modern game. Gonna demand more from the players. And well, maybe I've left the demand more too late because they've got a corner. It's whipped in. Merry heads it away, but only as far as Nicholas Davies gives it to Phillips. Little one two at the edge of the box for older shot. Now in a wide area, Phillips. We're in the lead, but I've not changed anything having taken the lead. I feel like we have to continue to play our game. Maybe that's going to be a critical mistake because they are back level. Lots of our players behind the ball playing a really compact line. We're making it difficult for them to play through us, trying to force them to go long and, well, try and get balls in behind that we can hopefully mop up just like that. The ball all the way back with Bycroft. He's going to try and pick out Atkinson. Our left winger, by the way, not currently wanted, but a couple of weeks ago, Portsmouth allegedly were wanting him. It, you know, it little appeared with a little wanted thing, like he was in the Wild West by Portsmouth. So keep an eye on that. Maybe he's another player we'll end up cashing in on. Um, of course, today he's playing for us, and today... Nolan's given away the most dumb penalty I've ever seen. What is he doing? Is he Teo Hernandez in the World Cup quarterfinals? Because he's just taken out a man who was never going to get to the ball. And Aldershot now with a penalty. But I don't know if the keeper touched or if it hit the post. It hit something before it went in. Unfortunately, we are 2-1 down now. 
I'm a little bit concerned that Crow is on a yellow card and Atkinson's on a 6.3 also on a yellow card, already thinking about at halftime moving Merry over to that left-hand side, a move we've made very often this season, playing him as that inside forward and then maybe bringing in Kai Livingston on the right-hand side for us at halftime. Nolan at left-back, he's got to make amends for giving away that penalty. He's given it to Atkinson, who, well, unfortunately for us, just runs into a load of danger. I feel like a second goal here for Oldershot, or I say second goal, a goal to make it a two-goal lead for Oldershot, technically. Third goal for Oldershot would be disastrous. And oh my word, they've just scored the best goal I've seen so far this series. What was that? I want to be annoyed with our players. I can't be annoyed with our players. That is mad. Bowery? I mean, who is this geezer? What is his long shots? Where did you find him? Where did you find him? The ball comes down with snow on it. He takes it down, hits it on the half volley and chips my keeper from 35 yards out. It's hard to be mad. I'm not one to say the FA Cup dream is in danger. As things stand though, we have a lot of work to do in this second half. I'm going to do what I've done before, tell the players that I'm not happy. I am going to change things up. We're going to move Merry out onto the left, Livingston out onto the right. We've seen this change a million and one times before. Elsewhere, I don't want Car Car uh, Dylan Crow to get sent off, so I'm going to bring in Cox. And I think I'm also going to move Livingston to winger on attack. We're going to go to the 4-2-4 that served us well when we fought back from a goal down against York away from home. I need a report of those heroics. I'm going to tell the players I've got faith in them. And LBM hates me. He's not happy at the moment. Look, head on, lad. You can win us this game. <sighs> We need a miracle. I'm going to be really sad if our FA Cup run ends at Aldershot. No disrespect to Aldershot, but I wanted to lose to a big football league team if we made it to the third round. And now they've got a free kick. Hilton over it. They've already scored one screamer. And now they've scored another shot from outside the box. And I just feel sad. On the one hand, we have to be really, really proud of how far we've made it in this competition. It's been an insane run. At the same time... This is not how I wanted it to end. I didn't want to get slaughtered by Aldershot. The only silver lining, I suppose, here is that they do have a stadium that holds 7,000 fans. The away end seems fairly filled out with people making the trip over from Guernsey. The home end may be slightly less so, but we will at least get a bit of a payday here. I mean, I say that. We're not here to collect a check. I'm not here for payday. I'm here to win. There's still, what, 30 Five minutes left. It's not over. It's not over. I'm, I'm being very defeatist at 4-1. Cox has come in. He's made a bit of a difference. Farquad has scored. You know what? With that, I'm going to shout some encouragement to the lads. It's not over yet. Believe. I say that. You're thinking it. I'm thinking it. it it's going to be tough to come back from here. Okay, there is, what, 25 minutes left in this game? We can't work the ball into the box. We've got to go more direct, up the tempo, in transition, distribute it quickly, over the top. It's time to go long. It's time to press as hard as we can. Get stuck in, lads. Step up more. And just, just go for broke. We've got nothing to lose here. We need two goals. And whilst we've not been completely outclassed in this game, we've struggled to have the ball. We've made the most of the times where we have had possession... We need something magical to happen in the next 15 minutes. And I've got one sub left. You know what? And LBM's not been good enough. Forbes, on you come, lad. Throw in on this near side. Nolan gives it to, well, attempts to give it to Mary. It's dealt with well by Aldershot. Phillips gets it away. Williams wins the header, though. Osborne can shoot from range. We've seen it before. This time he tries to pass. I, mean, I think he's better at shooting than passing in that situation. He's got the ball back again for us. Ball chipped forward. Forbes is there. On off the bench. Takes it down. Lays it to Farquad. It's 4-3 with 12 minutes left. Farquad's just got a hat-trick. I mean, it couldn't happen, could it? Could it? I want to believe. The rain's lashing down. You know, it's, it's a tricky day for goalkeepers. They can't catch the ball as easily. And it's not been a great day for goalkeeping. We've had seven goals in this game. That was a good finish, though. That thing, by the way, about it raining. In Football Manager, when it's raining, goalkeepers punch the ball more. I don't know if people knew that, but there you go. The more you know, goalkeepers won't hold on to the ball as much in the rain. That is actually a thing. Oh, my word. We have a chance. Merry gets to the end of the Forbes blocked kind of clearance for them. Williams wins the ball, gives it to Osborne. He takes it down, gives it to Livingston. Farquad's offside. If he scores, don't celebrate it. The flag's raised. I'm not celebrating. You've not got me this time, football manager. Seven minutes left. I'm in this situation where I've gone all out attack. I kind of just have to sit back and hope something happens. I can do one last shout of demand more. You know what? We've got four minutes left. Let's just send everyone up for corners. 
Four minutes of added time. It's still 4-3. Is there even a highlight to end this? There isn't. We fought back so valiantly. In the second half, I'd argue we were the better team, but alas. The FA Cup dream. I'm not sure what the dream was, because we were never going to win the whole thing. But the dream of going as far as we could, it ends with older shot away. I mean, at least we got a good away day out of it. Got to feel bad for Farquad, really. He's got a hat-trick there, and we've still lost. So unfortunately for us, that is the FA Cup dream over, at least for this season. We do get £3,000 in terms of uh, prize money. I don't know if there's a little bit of money in terms of ticket sales as well. I Looking at the finances, I think that has been a little influx, um, so to say, but not a huge amount of money by any means. But we had fun. It, it was nice while it lasted. If we'd got a bigger team, I'd be sat here perhaps more happy. I wanted to believe that maybe we could make it through. I suppose the fact that we lost by such a marrow, narrow margin, marrow margin, um, <laughs> means that it's just all the more gutting, really. So the FA Cup dream is dead, but of course we have still got the league to focus on. We are eight points clear at the top, and whilst it does look comfortable at least for now, there is still 20 games left of the season. Looking at the 20 games left of the season, there's not any games that jumped out immediately. I might investigate some of the away days and try and find some of the more interesting ones that we can go and do. Given the fact we're going to get more than likely promoted this year, might be our last chance to visit some of these. Today's episode has been a little bit of a longer one and I have had to play a lot more Football Manager than I originally planned to get it all done and ready on a day's notice. I hope that has been appreciated. The first two matches I did have to edit a little bit more kind of tightly as a result of this third game being so far away and also just to make the video not too long. But hopefully you got to the end of the video. If you got to this point in the video, secret message, let me know who your favourite Pokemon is. If you don't like Pokemon, just lie and say it's Pikachu. Gives you an idea of how many people actually watched to this point in the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this season's FA Cup run. We'll be back sometime soon for more away day action. We get to focus on the league now. We get to focus on promotion. Our finances look secure. And well, hopefully tomorrow we'll be coming back recovered and still looking in pole position in the league. Until then, take it easy. It's me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.